Your current time right now is 602. The Iowa State Patrol says multiple people are dead and more than a dozen are injured from the tornado that went through Greenfield. First responders this morning haven't released any officials numbers, but they do plan on having more details soon. Leaders have put out a mandatory curfew in place effective until 7 this morning. That's expected to continue until further notice. Yeah, this morning, many in Adair County are still picking up the pieces after that deadly tornado. Homes and businesses destroyed. Thousands are now having to rebuild. Local 5's Megan McPherson is in Greenfield this morning to show us the damage caused by the storm. Samantha, good morning. Right now, we're just about a mile outside of the center of Greenfield, which was that hardest hit area. But here in the outskirts of town, you can still get a sense of the sense of destruction and devastation left behind by this tornado. I'm going to step out of the way here. You can see behind me looks to be some kind of work shed that was just completely destroyed. There are so many work materials like barbed wire and buckets that are just scattered all over the place. And then if we pan to the right over here, you can see that there is a home Home. Again, just the roof torn off, completely destroyed. The level of destruction here quite immense. We're going to keep following this throughout the morning now that the sun has come up. But for now, I'll send it back to you guys. Megan, for folks just tuning in, where can people go if they need to reunite with loved ones? What are the resources available? Yes, yeah, Samantha, there are plenty of resources available for residents here in Greenfield um, as the day gets going here. There is the United Cajun Navy, members of the United Cajun Navy on site that are available there. As we know, there are still multiple people that have not been accounted for yet after the storm yesterday. So um, if you head to the United Cajun Navy's Facebook page, you can find ways to contact them. They're a great resource here in town if you're missing a loved one or if you need additional information. Megan, thank you. We'll continue to check in with you throughout the show. Our team coverage continues this morning at 604 now local fives Dana Cyril's caught up with a family just sitting on their front porch as they re recounted their experience during the storm and the aftermath. It's one of the craziest experiences one of the craziest days I guess of my life. A family home destroyed and as you can see in my <laughs> you can see it's five nights at Freddy's after fearing for their lives during the storm and they I heard mom and dad come in and I heard the loudest like Loudest ambient noise I guess I've ever heard in my life. It was just a straight rumble, a constant loud, you know. Um, and I felt an intense pressure in my ears. And I picked up my daughter and like it just didn't feel right. So I picked up my daughter and ran over to the wall in the basement and then our window blew out in the basement. And all I could taste was dirt. So everything blew in and it was just calm. Not knowing what comes next crazy feeling because you're just shaking you don't know what to do you don't know how to start so yeah honestly i don't know at this point like because i of course i already have seen it i just was just glad that my family was safe and stuff so and trying to take it all in a, the big first reaction is I mean, you say audibly, oh my God, of course you're happy that like your kids are safe and your family is safe, but then there's something that you work so hard for that is no longer here. Uh, it's, it's hard, you know, you, it's, it's very hard to, you know, save up the money to buy a house. And when you have it, that's like your safe space. Now, as Local 5's Dana Searles reporting, Governor Reynolds is also making a stop this morning in Greenfield to survey the damage to the city. The governor also issued a proclamation of disaster emergency for 15 counties following the storms. The proclamation allows state resources to be utilized for damage. It also activates the Iowa Individual Assistance Program. Adair County Hospital had to evacuate Tuesday morning because of the severe weather threats. Mercy One confirmed its Adair location sustained some damage, but did not comment on the extent. Right now, the local high school is serving as a place for families to reunite. The ACGC football team posted on Facebook they're collecting water through Friday also at the high school there. And if you are unable to get a hold of a loved one in Greenfield, be sure to call the Iowa Department of Public Safety Storm Lake Communications Center at 712-732-1341. That number right there 
on your screen. And at 6.07 now, we are taking a look, tracking power outages across central Iowa. So as a high wind speeds, the rain and hail hit neighborhoods. Thousands of Iowans were without power for hours Tuesday night. As of this morning, we're still seeing quite a few power outages on Mid-American's map. As of 6 o'clock, close to 2,000 people are without power. And in Urbandale, nearly 400 are without power. And Johnston High School is canceling classes for today, <clears throat> excuse me, and asking staff to not be in the building. <clears throat> excuse me, that's according to the school's website. Now the school is closing because of extensive storm damage to the building. It also canceled its senior awards night, but says all seniors will get their cords and awards before graduation. And classes are also canceled at Samuelson Elementary School in Des Moines after losing power in Tuesday's storms. Morning preschool at Woodlawn Education Center is also canceled. All right, take a look at your screen there. Crews had repaired and blocked off roads because of flash flooding Tuesday in Des Moines. At least six inches of water rushing down Euclid in both directions. Des Moines police say they encountered nearly a dozen installed cars in flooded streets as of Tuesday morning. But one Des Moines resident hit the brakes when she saw the water in front of her. I'm not going through it <laughs> because I know, like I said, my husband went through some water like that and it ruined his engine. Yeah. And I think I'm too low to get over that curb. I don't know, I might have to just wait for no cars to come in and go down this street backwards. Now, thankfully for Sandy, she and her small car turned around and went around the water after the Iowa DOT blocked Euclid. So if you are stuck in a flash flood event in your car, officials say the best thing to do is fi find high ground as fast as you can. But if that's not possible, then climb on top of your car and call 911. Storms also made their way through Ankeny and Alleman Tuesday afternoon. Strong winds ripped two very large pine trees up from the ground and tore apart a family's shed. The owners of the property told Local 5 they were thankful for no injuries and only had property damage. And here's some video from the old Des Moines University campus right across the street from the campus that I shot yesterday on Des Moines West Side. This tree was knocked over onto Grand Avenue, blocking off a part of the road. You see the roots there ripped right out of the pavement. That was all due to high winds that we also experienced on Tuesday.